Delayed onset muscle soreness. Is it necessary to be sore after a training session? And what to do if you have lagging body parts that you either want or think should be growing faster than they are, yet you're not really getting sore after your sessions? Let's go through it all today. But first, what actually makes you sore after training, besides the obvious injury? There are a couple of reasons as to why you may experience DOMS after your training session, delayed onset muscle soreness, and the most widely accepted reasoning behind it is inflammation and cell swelling caused by micro trauma and microscopic tears within muscle fibers. Makes sense, you go into the gym, you damage your muscle fibers, creates inflammation, you get sore. Uh, they heal and away you go again, rinse and repeat. So it would make sense that you should be sore after a workout, but really and truly being sore is not the determining factor whether you are growing or not. If you are a beginner, you don't have to be sore at all. You may have a little bit of a dull ache. It doesn't mean that you are training hard enough or too hard. What you need to know is as a beginner, whatever you're doing in the gym is going to cause a lot of muscle growth. If you are more advanced in the gym and you don't experience DOMS, it's also not necessary for growth. But if you feel like you can be growing faster, if you feel like you have lagging body parts, let's just say your chest, yet you're not really feeling much strain or DOMS after your pec workout, it could be a telltale sign that you can probably add more work. So what are the common causes behind increased DOMS? How do we actually create more DOMS, more pain, more micro trauma? Well, the novelty of a new exercise, as we all know, is going to make you feel quite sore. The eccentric focused training aspect of exercise, so that's the lowering phase, creates a lot of micro trauma. That's where a lot of the damage occurs within each rep. So focusing on the eccentric, slowing down your reps can massively, massively increase DOMS. Higher volume training, so more weight, more reps, more sets, and slower tempo will all increase delayed onset muscle soreness. Also training close to failure, if any of you know what the reps in reserve chart is, most of our clients train within four reps within reserve, three reps, two reps, one rep, and we seldom go to zero reps in reserve. The closer you go to that failure point, the more DOMS you may experience. Pump focused training, so high rep training where you're really focusing on getting a pump, you know, blowing your biceps up, that can create a lot of DOMS. Deep stretch under load. This can really, really create a lot of pain. If you've ever done a Romanian deadlift with a big stretch and a pause at the bottom, you know all about it the next day. You can really think about it. If a muscle has to hold on by both ends as it's fully lengthened, hold on for dear life, that creates a lot of stimulus and a lot of damage to the surrounding musculature. So if you are training a couple of times per week, you're getting stronger, you're feeling good, you're waking up the next day, you might have a little bit of an ache, but you're thinking, I don't know, did I really do a good session there? I wouldn't overly worry about it. If you're progressing in the gym, that's the best sign that you are progressing. If, however, you feel like, okay, you jump out of bed, no pain whatsoever, don't even feel like you've done a workout, and you're kind of working towards that intermediate stage, you could definitely be asking yourself, are you putting enough work into each rep, each set, and is there enough volume in your training to elicit the maximum amount of stimulus that we need to grow optimally. So on the note, if you struggle with lagging body parts, say your biceps just don't seem to grow, something you can incorporate is one of these fellas here. Eccentric focus training, higher volume training, closer to failure, pump focus training, or working on that deep, deep stretch. Then what you can do, incorporate that into your program, see how you feel, see how you react over the course of a couple of weeks, and then see if it actually gets you some more growth. If, however, on the flip side, you are always sore, Every day you wake up and something is sore. And let's just say you train legs on a Monday and then you have another leg session on a Friday. If you're still sore on Friday morning when you wake up after that Monday session, that's a good telltale sign you've actually went too far with your session. Why? Because you'll go in on Friday and you won't be able to create the same force production as that session on Monday. You won't be able to get as much of a stimulus out of it and you may actually increase the risk of injury. Does that mean you've done too much work on the Monday session? Not necessarily. So what I would be looking at before thinking, am I doing too much in my session? Is it not enough? I would be optimizing your lifestyle. What are the couple of factors that are really going to ensure that you recover your best? So very, very seldom is it an overtraining problem, but an under recovery problem. How do we fix that? Sleep quality, sleep quantity, one of the most important aspects of this health and fitness journey that you're on. If you can ensure you're getting seven and a half to nine hours of quality sleep, deep sleep, that's where you're releasing a lot of your growth hormones, growth factors. So really prioritizing your sleep quality, very, very important. After that, your caloric intake. Are you eating enough food, enough sustenance to actually recover? If you want to build a house, there has to be bricks outside the house. With that, are you consuming enough protein and amino acids for you to recover optimally? Making sure you're having adequate fats in your diet, adequate carbohydrates, all very important for recovery as well. And then on top of that, stress management. 
If you're somebody who is like a wire brush, you're stressed out of your marbles all the time, you are maladaptive. You are just not really going to respond to training. You have high levels of cortisol, you easily break down muscle tissue, it's not going to leave you in a good state to train. So really prioritizing those three things is very, very important to ensure that you're optimally recovering. If you are doing what you can to recover from session one to session two, and by the morning of session two, you're still not feeling great, like you can put the foot to the floor, I would definitely reduce your overall load in the first session earlier in the week. You should not be sore for more than 48 hours after a session. Otherwise, the only thing that's gonna happen, you've created so much micro trauma that by the next session coming around, you're just going to get back to baseline again. So soreness is an indicator that you are actually progressing, that you put enough work in, but it's not the indicator. So take it with a pinch of salt. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't get sore, but it doesn't mean that just because you're sore, you've had a fantastic session. How do we know we've had a fantastic session? Well, you move more weight on the bar, you're feeling good, you have good contractions, you have good pumps, you're beating the logbook. That's how we know we're progressing in the gym. So don't just rely on feeling super, super sore. If I wanted to do that tomorrow, I haven't done a dumbbell fly in, I don't know, two years. I could go down to the gym, do two sets of dumbbell flies, I'll wake up tomorrow and I will not be able to move my chest. Have I really got that much growth? Probably not. Just because I'm very sore doesn't mean I've progressed very much at all. If that was the case, I would be happy to go down and do two sets of flies because I wouldn't have to do the other 12 or 14 sets that I have to do. Hope that makes sense. Now, if you have any questions or queries regarding soreness, pain, stiffness, anything to reduce it, supplementation, drop myself or another member of the team a message and we're going to get back to you right away.